Hello there, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Tip of the Week. Um, I'm just going through some more of the new features here in Harmony, and this week I will go over using the Mesh Warp and the Envelope tools. So both the Mesh Warp and the Envelope tools are going to give us the ability to warp a drawing based off of a grid. And um, so I'll show you how that works on a bitmap drawing, but it works on bitmap and vector, so you can kind of you know do it on any drawing that you want. Okay, so let's get started. Um, I'm just going to start in by importing an image here so that I can do it on a bitmap example. Um, but you don't have to do it on an imported image. You can also do it on an image that you draw in. But importing an image in here is also going to give me an opportunity to go over the new import images window because it has changed a bit now that we have um, bitmap and vector drawings in here. So let me just explain a little bit what the import options are. Keep is original bitmap, import is a Toon Boom bitmap, and convert to a Toon Boom vector. So if you want to keep the original bitmap layer, what that does is it uses the old bitmap functionality that we used to have where it basically just imports the bitmap layer but you can't do anything with it. So you wouldn't be able to use your drawing tools on it and so on. Uh, some people like to do this when they're working with imported background images because they might want to open up the original uh, imported image in Photoshop and make some changes. And if you keep it as the original bitmap, you can open it in Photoshop, make changes, hit save, and then you would see those changes in your Harmony scene. If you want to work on it in Toon Boom, though, you want to make sure that you can import it as a Toon Boom bitmap drawing. So if you do that, if you import it as a Toon Boom bitmap, then you'll be able to use all of the drawing tools within Harmony uh, to manipulate that layer. So, you know, you can draw, erase, use the cutter tool, and make changes within Toon Boom. However, you would not be able to open up the image in Photoshop again. So, um, you know, keep that in mind that once you come to Toon Boom, if you convert it to a Toon Boom bitmap drawing, then you're kind of stuck in Toon Boom. Whereas if you try and uh, plan on doing your edits outside, then you want to keep it as original. Um, the last option, of course, is to convert it into a Toon Boom vector drawing, which is the same as what we had before, where you have the vectorization options. Uh, we have removed the color vectorization option from here because we expect that most people, uh, instead of wanting to use color vectorization, will choose to uh, keep it as a Toon Boom bitmap drawing. So that's what we're going to do here. Um, so let's just leave this. Uh, vertical fit, by the way, is always a good option when you're working in an HD format. So this is why this is now the default option. So it's going to make sure that it fits the top and bottom of the frame with your image. Uh, but the image that I'm importing in is not HD. It's just a, a random file size. So we'll see what happens. Um, and then you can pre-multiply it, keep it straight, like whatever works for you there. Um, and so since it has, it is a multi-layer image within Photoshop, um, you can either create a single layer or keep it as separate layers. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and keep it as a single layer here and uh, go with that. So here we go. I've got my image and we can see that since it was vertical fit, it has fit it with the top and the bottom of the frame. Um, so at this point now, since I imported it as a Toon Boom bitmap layer, I can come in here and I can make changes. See, I can get my soft eraser on there if there's anything that I want to do just to kind of just to show the ex an example of what you might want to do if you're importing as a Toon Boom bitmap. So that you couldn't do before. You could not get a soft a nice soft eraser edge in here. Um, and then let's say I might also want to start doing some other things with it. So um, we on a bitmap layer we have the ability now to use the mesh warp. We also have a new tool that's a vector only tool uh, which is your um, envelope tool. So let's do something similar here. Let's do just a little a little branchy thing. And we brought the uh, envelope tool in here for those people that are um, that came from Flash, you know, that were used to having that envelope tool that really wanted to have that same kind of a tool here. Uh, but the way that it works on, on bitmap and with the way that it works on vector is, is definitely different. So in this version, you might also realize that we don't have the perspective tool um, working on the bitmap layer yet. That's just one of those things that is going to come in a future version, but is really not such a big deal right now because you can still um, skew your drawings with the with the selector, the cutter tool. But if you're working on a vector image, so what we would normally have done before is you can select the entire image and you would have the ability to sort of skew it and squash and stretch it using your select tool. 
or you could come in here with your perspective tool and with the perspective tool if you make your selection there you could kind of do this kind of a thing so that was already there in the previous version uh, but what we've added in here now is the envelope tool so with your envelope tool when you make your selection uh, you can come in here and you can also define how many points you want to have on this grid. So if I want to have a, a grid with multiple different points, then you could come in here and you could kind of just warp that drawing. But now when you do this on a vector drawing, it's only doing it on the selection. And here it's just on the single drawing that you're working on. So in other words, it's not this envelope tool does not allow you to animate it over time it just allows you to modify the single drawing because it's a drawing tool right it's just like your perspective of your envelope tool so it's just editing the current drawing so we've also added something called the mesh warp which does allow you to animate points like that over time and so this works on both bitmap and vector whereas the envelope tool only works on vector so let's take a look here at this uh, network so I've got my converse shoe design because this is the design that I put on my converse and um, so now I can come in here and in my effects library I have a new filter in there that's called mesh warp and we have um, redone some of the uh, the the looks of these icons and so on in here so you might have to get used to the way that they look a little bit but basically I can come in here with my mesh warp and now if I add this in here just make sure that you have the um, the toolbar showing in your camera view and right click on there as long as the camera view is, is shown on then you'll see the same view that I do here because I like to just click on this show control button here it's the same as going view show control. Um, you might have used it previously if you were using the quad map tool or even with deform. So it basically, it, even with particle systems, the, the control, showing the controls give you, gives you the ability to access the handles. So when I come in here now, I can either sort of uh, resize the entire thing, uh, the entire box on here by grabbing the handle on the outside and then I can redo the points on the inside and moving the points around I can select each individual point and move it around so you now see what's happening right I'm actually I'm moving around uh, the individual points on there and warping my drawing so um, you can define in the properties of the module just how many points you want to have on your grid so if I come in here um, you can select how many rows and how many columns you want. If you do make a change, uh, it's going to redo your functions. So make sure that you plan it ahead of time the, the number of uh, points that you're going to want because you can't change that dynamically while you're doing it. So now if I come in to my timeline here, I can uh, set some keyframes on the warp. So let's say if I want to start it there, um, and maybe you even want to do something neat where if you want to do like a fisheye effect, then you might want to do something kind of like this where you have this uh, bit of a curve on the inside something like that so I'm just simulating a bit of a fisheye effect with this um, with this grid and you so I can set a keyframe on that uh, just made by inserting a keyframe and then I can insert another keyframe later on and I could do something like if if I want to move the entire drawing then I can have a peg layer on top of everything and this peg layer on top of everything would enable me to move the entire drawing around so if I select that peg layer then I can move the drawing and the warp around together but if I just move the warp around and um, I select that grid there to either to resize it or just select somewhere on the grid see how you can do sort of like a even like a magnifying glass effect just by moving this around and now if I just sort of I can hide the control again if I don't want to see it and if I play through whoa so you see you can do start to do some pretty neat looking things um, of course like I mentioned this works on both bitmap and on vector so you can have a play around with that um, to, to check out the different effects uh, whereas the envelope tool that I showed you earlier would work only on an individual drawing and on a vector drawing so hopefully that gives you guys some ideas I mean it's really not that um, difficult to use you just select the mesh warp show the control once you see the control you can select the individual points and manipulate the individual points around and uh, you can resize the system with the 
handle on the outside and um, then you can move it around just by dragging anywhere within that grid. So uh, I love to see what you guys come up with. See you next time.